Hi everybody, welcome to our lunch break, our OU lunch break webinar. I'm Adina Sakla from ParentingSimply.com and today's topic is creating a kosher and kid-friendly Pesach. So we want to talk about involving our children in all aspects of the holiday of Pesach and we're going to talk about organizing yourself and organizing your kids getting them to help out. We're also going to talk about the true joy of making lists. And we are going to talk about how to make the Pesach story come alive. So I just want to take a minute to thank Judy Steinig, Representative Judy Steinig of the OU, for putting this all together. I also want to thank Alex Cook for handling the technical aspects of this webinar. And also, I always say this, at every OU lunch break webinar, but I'm so excited to be working with Devorah Katz of Chalakrams.com. Uh, Chalakrams.com is a great website full of activities and crafts, Jewish um, activities and crafts for holidays, for the parsha. It's you definitely want to check it out. Okay, and Devorah is an alone shvut Israel. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, so we could all take a minute to appreciate. Uh, the miracle of technology with this webinar. Okay, so this is how it works. I'm going to be speaking first, and I'm going to be talking about organizing yourself and organizing your kids and the true joy of making lists and also how to gain your child's cooperation, how to get, help them help you this Pesach. And Devorah is going to talk about how to make the Pesach story come alive. So she'll come on after me. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about organizing ourselves for the Pesach holiday. So I am going to share with you my lists, from my treasure trove of lists, but my lists for Pesach. Now, before we get started, I need to say that this is really how I work best. With lists, I start early and I do all this, I work from lists, and I start early with my Pesach cleaning because number one, I do spring cleaning and Pesach cleaning together, okay? So if you do not do spring cleaning and Pesach cleaning together, then, you know, again, take this, take this part of the class with a grain of salt, okay? Just because this is the way I work best, doesn't mean that this is the way you work best. I'm really just giving suggestions. And I think that this is very important to say because we all need to find the way that, find a way that we work best. So I personally struggle with organization. I'm not a naturally organized person. And I also struggle with time. My time intelligence is not Great. So again, I have to give myself a lot of wiggle room. And so where did I get this information from <laughs> that everybody needs to find the way that they work best? I, I got it from this fantastic book called um, Time Management from the Inside Out. I hope you could see this by Julie Morgenstern. Okay. So in the book... She talks about that, your unique relationship to time and that everybody is different. So um, the thing that helped me the most is that in her book, she spoke about, um, she gave you this little chart and I'll read it to you. Um, and it really made me understand how people work differently. So she said that you need to, figure out if the majority of the time you prefer to concentrate in short bursts or concentrate for long stretches of time, okay? How do you work best? Um, so for me, I need to concentrate in long stretches. I need long stretches of time to concentrate on a project or whatever it is that I'm doing, 
Okay. Are you able to focus on one thing at, at a time or do you, are you able to multitask? So me personally, I need to focus on one thing at a time. I know a lot of people who women, most women are able to multitask very well. Um, do you like a fast and busy schedule or do you like a slow and easy schedule? Okay. So I like a slow and easy schedule. That's why I, you'll see on my list here, I start two to three months before Pesach. Um, do you prefer plans and predictability or surprises and spontaneity? Okay, so I prefer plans and predictability. That's why I have the list. Um, don't like surprises. <laughs> don't like spontaneity. I was just actually talking to my friend over Shabbos, and she's like, I, I just, I cannot work with the plan. Like, I, I need to, uh, I, I work well, um, with, like, without deadlines, or actually with deadlines, she really works well under pressure. That's what she was trying to say. Okay, I don't work well during under pressure. Um, do you like to stew on things, like think about things, or make quick decisions? Do you like to work independently, or do you like to work collaboratively, like with a lot of people around you? So personally, again, I like to work independently. I like to work uh, when there's quiet in my kitchen. So I really try to do uh, as much as I can before my kids are home from school for Pesach vacation. I'm getting better at it though, you know, having my kids help out in the kitchen, which is good. Um, okay, do you like to work in silence or do you like to work with background mus music or noise? Do you like working with your hands or working with your head? So these are just all... Um, ideas of how people work differently. So I guess the last couple of them, well, it does, I guess it does apply to your uh, Pesach preparation. But again, in general, it's really how do you work best, okay? So let's take this into consideration this Pesach um, time. And I really, um, I know that we don't have so much time before Pesach anymore, but I really highly recommend getting this book, Time Management from the Inside Out. And it gives you just great ideas, again, on how you work best. So you can't compare yourself to other people. You can't look to see how other people are working and feel bad that you don't do that or that um, you don't, you don't, um, it's a word like you can't you don't want to you don't want to compare yourself to other people okay so because you really need to look within yourself and again see what works best for you so again this is just all these lists the list that I'm giving you here and the ideas that I'm giving you here are just suggestions take it with a grain of salt if you think it'll work for you great not, not. If this is the first time that you are making Pesach, understand that there's a lot of trial and error. So um, you might get some stuff wrong. You might forget to do things. That's just all part of learning how to do something new, how to prepare for Pesach. So it seems a little scary because you don't want to get Pesach wrong, but there's always room in Halacha for mistakes, okay? So you can always ask your rabbi what to do if you forgot to do something. Okay, fine. So that being said, uh, oh, I do want to add that um, I'm going to, now I'm going to talk to you about my list about how I do Pesach, but at the end I give you, uh, you should have a, on your handout a link to my friend's web website, and she cleans for Pesach in one day. So just even looking at that article that she wrote on her blog like makes me nervous because I could never do it in one day. But I understand that there are people who again work well under pressure who really just need one day to do what they're doing. Also you might have a lot of stamina. I don't have a lot of stamina. I don't have a lot of energy. I need to work slowly. So you might have a lot of stamina and energy and you're really able to put in a whole day of work like that. So then you might, you could look at that article and see how you can make Pesach in one day. Okay. All right, so let's get back to my list. So you have on your handout, um, you see that I like to start two to three months 
before Pesach. Again, this is spring cleaning, okay? This is not really Pesach cleaning. I want to make sure that I make that distinction. And also, I want you to know that as I get closer to Pesach, and it's getting closer to Pesach, if I see that, um, I try to prioritize what's Pesach cleaning and spring cleaning, and what is spring cleaning before, um, as I get closer to Pesach. Because if I see that I'm not getting certain things done, um, and that's spring cleaning, then I, I, I'll leave it for after Pesach, even though that drives me a little bit crazy, but I will do that. Okay. All right. So two to three months before Pesach, you want to start on your bedrooms, the basement. The, you want to check out the bathrooms. You want to do your junk drawers, even though your junk drawers get messy again. But I like to give it a good cleaning. And then hopefully before Pesach, they don't really need, um, you don't really need to go through it that much. You want to check out the whole closets. You want to check out, check out the laundry room. Okay. Again, just some suggestions. A lot of that is spring cleaning. Now, so then about five weeks before Pesach. Actually, also, I just want to say that I, I like this list. Like, I like to know what I have to do two to three months before Pesach. I like to know what I need to do five weeks before Pesach. You might like a different type of list, okay? Um, you know, you might like to just have a whole list of what needs to be done and just check it off that way. Um, again, whatever works best for you. All right, so five weeks before Pesach, I really start trying to shop for Yom Tov shoes and clothing. Uh, that, I feel, takes like a really long time. I, I mean, I only have one girl. Uh, my boys are generally pretty easy <laughs> to shop for, um, but a girl, I think it, it just takes longer. I also like to schedule haircuts five weeks before. So, um, because my barber never has any appointments left before uh, Pesach, the week of Pesach, which, of course, I learned the hard way. Okay, so that's why I have it written down here. All right, then, you know, four weeks before Pesach, you want to start looking in your living room, your family room, and cleaning all that stuff up. Uh, you also want to take into consideration, my kids are not little anymore. So my youngest is 11. If you have little kids... You might have to do this a little bit differently. All right, so you, when you're at different stages of your life, you know, you, it, well, it, I feel like it gets a little bit easier as they get older. Um, so, but, you know, you do have to take that into consideration. If you're at different stages of your life, you might not be able to clean up the family room until the week before Pesach. Okay. Um, so then three weeks before Pesach, which... We're past that point. My garage is not clean, but that's really my husband and my kid's job. So you want to clean the garage, you want to clean the cars. Um, I like to clean my extra extra freezer, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, I like to shop for my food staples, paper goods, like anything that I get done, I like to get done. Um, buying, try to buy like the new utensils and dishes that that dishes that you need. Um, Tovel and any new kalim. Okay. Um, two weeks before, I like to do my Costco shopping, my the meat and chicken, and that's why I clean my extra freezer because I just stick it in the freezer. I just actually also, um, I put down plastic in my laundry room. I don't have a Pesach kitchen, but I put down plastic in my laundry, in my laundry room, and I use a laundry room sink, and I just clean my chickens. I season my chickens, stick them in, I lie them flat, I stick them in the freezer, so I just have to pull them out. Um, right before Pesach, I do that with my roast. I do that um, with my turkey breast, and um, it's all ready. So it's just all ready to go. My friends, I was just talking to my friends. They think I'm crazy. They think I make a big deal out of cleaning chickens. It's not such a big deal. So again, you know, this is just the way that like I feel more comfortable that my chickens are in the freezer and they're all cleaned and ready to go. But I have friends who are like, that is like the least of my problems. Like. The kugels are, are my issue, you know? The kugels are the hardest thing for me. So, again, whatever works best for you. Okay, um, two weeks before I like starting to clean my oven because just I, I have a self-cleaning oven, but just like around the corners, it's just always some issue there. Um, 
you want to, you know, if you need to cashier some chametz utensils, like we just like to cashier our kiddush cups. My husband has a kiddush cup that he really likes to use. I like to clean my pocketbook um, around that time. Okay, then one week before, then you're going to clean and cash your chick, uh, kitchen. You're going to turn over. So here, just an oven, the stove, the backsplash, the cabinets. Um, just, just a list of the things that you need to do in the kitchen. I just, again, I like to have it in a list. Wash chairs, tables, you know, wash down the refrigerator, the garbage can. I always forget the garbage can. Um, also, when my kids were little, the booster seat, the high chairs, and also the strollers. So you generally have to do the strollers like a week before because I don't know my kids used to eat in their stroller lots of snacks and stuff like that okay and you want to shop for all your fresh food ingredients don't forget your eggs and you want to start cooking so this year I'm cooking we're turning over God willing on next this Motzei Shabbat and then we're I'll start cooking probably Sunday okay so I'm just, again, suggestions, you know, um, you start cooking, cleaning your dining room, haircuts for all. Um, two days before, you know, you want to shop for your dairy products, your milk, your yogurt, your fruit, okay. Um, you want to wash your romaine lettuce. Then one day before, I like to boil potatoes for carpas. I, I try to do, like, so... I try to do everything so that Erev Yantiv is kind of calm in my house. So I'll boil the potatoes for carpas. I'll roast the egg, the egg and the zroa, the shank bone. I'll make my maror. Some people don't like to do that because it does lose its kick. If you do it, really, a lot of people like doing it Erev. Um, you want to take, so I take my mains and my kugels out of the freezer to defrost if I had made them in advance. I don't think this year I'm going to make them so much in advance. Um, you could set the table for the Seder. Um, and then Erev Pesach, burn the chametz. I make the haroset, the salad, the vegetables, the salzwasser, the salt water. And you want to cook or warm up your ready mains. Um, and then I have a last minute list here, which I usually give to my kids to do. Um, so you want to vacuum, change vacuum bags, change brooms. Clean the garbage can, you want to do like a last minute clothing wash, put away dish drainers, put away, put out new toothbrushes and toothpaste, put strings on the comments cabinets, and then just before Yanziv, you want to put up the hot water and leave on the stove and oven, which is always an issue with Shabbos mode. So um, it's always like tricky. I let my husband do that. Okay. All right, so that's basically what I do. That's my list on how I get ready for Pesach, okay? Or you can clean, or I guess my list for how I clean for Pesach, I guess do cooking for Pesach, um, or you could clean for Pesach in one day. And again, I left you the, um, the link for that article. It's a very popular article. Okay, I also have like a master list of Pesach foods to cook. So I just list everything that I need to make. I don't necessarily make everything like I tweak it every year, but that's basically what, what I do. And I like to work at, work from that list. And I love crossing off <laughs> the things that I make from this list. Okay. So those are just some suggestions. Um, also, here's a master Pesach shopping list that really works well for me. I like to work off of that list as well. Okay. So that's really the first part of our class. The second part of my class, my part of the class, is really um, helping our kids help us. Okay, or getting our kids, gaining cooperation from our children, getting our kids to really help out. So I think what we need to know, uh, well, we're going to, what we're going to talk about first is why do children have such a hard time listening? So we all know that we need our kids to listen, especially around Pesach time, we really need the help. There's just really a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's important for kids to help out. It's important for them to be a part of the holiday preparation. It makes them feel good to be able to do that. 
Okay, so again, we said that kids have a hard time listening. So why is that? So listening is not easy. Okay, listening takes a lot of concentration and energy. And we know that if we are ever in a meeting, like a board meeting or a meeting for work, it's not so easy to pay attention or concentrate the whole entire time. And our kids are in school the whole entire day, uh, you know, and then they come home and we ask them to help out. It's tough. They need, they need some downtime. Um, you know, also there are kids who are non-compliant, who really have a hard time listening, and um, they often can't understand our messages to them because they might have some processing issues or, you know, even I know when I'm sitting and reading a book, it's a big joke in my family. My, my kids and my husband need to call me like a few times before I'm actually able to pull myself away from the book. Like I don't even realize that they're talking to me because I'm so involved in the book. And especially when kids are on the computer or watching a video, it's very hard for them to pull themselves away from that to actually listen to you. So we do need to take that into consideration. And we will, I'm going to give you tips on how we can do that. Also, we need to know that kids, people, adults, all, everyone has a very real need for independence. We have this, um, we, we don't like people telling us what to do. Nobody likes people telling us what, telling, um, nobody likes people telling them what to do. Okay. Um, and, Kids have this very strong, so well, I should say some kids have a very strong need for independence. Some kids, some other kids are laid back. Um, and this is an important part of being human, okay? If that need for independence is important because it makes us feel like we have control over our lives, we feel empowered by knowing we can take care of ourselves, and it really is the groundwork, it's the basis for having self-respect, for having confidence, for having resilience. So we don't really want to, uh, we want to encourage our kids to think independently and to act independently, but we also have to balance that because they need to listen to us. It's very important for them to respect their parents. So we are gonna talk about some ways where we can ask our kids to do things without compromising that need for independence, with um, learning how to stop giving direct commands and asking them in more respectful ways, um, in a way that really takes that need for independence into account. And I think we spoke about that last year as well in our Pesach OU lunch break webinar. Okay, um, and also, We need to know that kids routinely misbehave. They're really, officially, they're not supposed to listen. It's sort of like great if they do, but if they don't, that's kind of normal, okay? Because kids just misbehave, okay? Non-compliant behavior is just a normal part of the child-parent interaction. And uh, so I guess I'm saying this so that we don't get angry at our kids when they don't listen. Okay, it's just, it's normal. Does that mean that we should just let them not listen and not help out? No, 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 that's not what I'm trying to say here. But again, we don't have to get angry that they're not listening. It's kind of normal for them not to listen. And then we need to find ways to encourage them to listen or to train them to listen. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so here are some tips to help us gain their cooperation, gain our children's cooperation. So number one, as you can see before, I like to make lists. So I really try to make lists. And here's just um, an example of the list that I make um, Erev Pesach, which actually you have before. <laughs> we went over that before. So I'll make a list like this, and I'll usually make a list every day in the morning for my kids, and I'll write their names. On, I'll write their name like next to the things that I think that they should do. Um, you, a lot of times I'll ask for their input, like if that would be something that they would like to do, 
or um, even if they don't like to do it, if they would mind doing that job. Um, other times I'll just write down what needs to be done and I'll have them pick what it is they want to do. And sometimes I'll just write their name next to what I think they um, should be done or the job that needs to be done. Okay, it really depends on my mood. It depends on what's going on in the house. But if you have a very independent child, I would really suggest you that you work with them to make that list. I think it just works better that way if you have a very independent child. Okay, and it really it just it lets them know what to expect. You're not surprising them. Again, kids hate to be surprised they um they don't want to be pulled away from their computer and reading a book or playing outside whatever it is that they're doing they have a hard time being pulled away from that and um this way they know what to expect and you could say you know i need this done by 10 o'clock in the morning i need this done know, by four o'clock in the afternoon give it a time frame Okay, and that's really basically for older kids, but even younger kids, you could make lists with them, like with simpler things to do. Okay, um, you could also have mini meetings in the morning. So generally I do this, I try to like every morning to just gather everybody together, right? Like, and we'll say, you know, tomorrow I'll need help cleaning two selves in the pantry. Today I'll need you to peel potatoes and carrots. Um, also, we want to prepare them for the spontaneous help that you're going to need because you are going to need them randomly throughout the day, especially like the two to three days before Pesach. So um, you want to warn them and you want to say just letting you know that today I'm going to need lots of help without without much warning. I know it could be frustrating. However, I'll, I will need your cooperation. Okay, And they basically know that Pesach is crunch time and that they are going to ha have to help out. Okay, but we do want to let them know, we want to remind them that they might be needed on a minute's notice. Okay, and that will help gain their cooperation. It's not great, but it will help. Okay, um, so we also have the classic, I call them like classic tips on how to gain cooperation from our kids. And that's from the book, How to Talk So Kids Will Listen. Now, their whole premise, their whole philosophy is that we don't want to give our kids direct commands because as soon as we get, we spoke about this, they, that kids have this instinct for independence. They don't like being told what to do. So we need to talk to them in a way that circumvents that. Okay, or again, takes that um, need for independence into consideration. So they say that, um, that you want to describe the problem. So instead of you never listen or help, uh, how many times do I have to tell you to clean up? I need help peeling vegetables. You want to say there's a whole bag full of vegetables and carrots that need to be peeled. Okay, so just listen to the differences in those sentences, in those phrases. Okay, the first one is accusatory. A child is probably going to be put on the defensive. The second one is just more neutral. It's just more non-confrontational. That's basically their whole philosophy. Okay, another skill that they teach, another tip is giving information. So instead of you're making such a mess with those vegetables, you want to say vegetables need to be peeled over some old newspapers. Okay, just giving information. We could also give choices. This is great for gaining children's cooperation. We spoke about this also in our Purim. Um, uh, webinar. So instead of you better help out now, do you want to peel vegetables or set the table? We also want to say it with a word. Instead of I ask you 10 times to help out and just sitting there, you're being so lazy. You just want to say the vegetables. Okay. I have even like yelled this to like when my kids are not in, uh, you know, in their bedrooms or I'll be like the vegetables. Okay. Meaning and then they infer that their vegetables need to be peeled. Okay. Um, also, talking about your feelings is another great skill. So instead of get off the computer right now and help, you could say, I feel so frustrated when I have to ask you more than once to help out, especially on Arab Pesach. I personally love this skill that you get to talk about your feelings. You get to talk about the fact that you're frustrated because it is very frustrating when your kids don't listen. We didn't talk about that. Uh, we only spoke about how kids feel. 
you know, why they don't listen, but it's very frustrating for parents. It's very annoying and we really get angry. So this is a way for us to let off a little bit of steam without accusing, um, without making them feel bad. Okay, so um, I, I personally love this skill and I, will, I use it often. Okay, also writing a note instead of we need to clean the pantry, the drawers and the chairs, then we need to bake the cakes and the cookies. We just want to try. I, it's hard for I think to see, but again, the list which we spoke about before. Okay, just try writing it down. Okay, now the last one here, I really got this idea from Sarah Hannah Radcliffe, her book Raising Your Children Without Raising Your Voice. Um, she really talks about being positive. Okay, so this also, it just creates a great um, atmosphere in your house or a better atmosphere in your house, a happier atmosphere in your house as you're getting ready for Pesach. And um, actually, I take a class with um, this woman, Rebetzin Barkin, who's like, she is a Tzadikas. She lives in Cleveland. And she said that you really need to realize that all this Pesach preparation is such a huge mitzvah and with everything that you do all the cooking and the cleaning you're really getting a lot of suyot. like you're really getting a lot of mitzvahs as you prepare for Pesach and she says just try to keep that in mind as you're preparing so it's a little tricky as you're cleaning the oven to say oh wow this is such a big mitzvah but if you do it sort of it changes things around a little bit okay it makes it I don't know it makes it, I guess it elevates, elevates uh, cleaving the oven to just from something that's really like mundane and boring to something that's spiritual and, and a mitzvah. So that's like a, one way that we could really be positive. Um, okay, and we don't want to say things like, I'm never going to be able to get everything I need to get done for Pesach done, or I can't get it together. We want to say, I can do this. I can manage and cope. It will all work out in the end. And we want to have our kids hear us say this. This is going to work out. This is tough, but we're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to get to Pesach. Right? I hear so many people say, Pesach comes anyway. It always does, and we're always ready. And, and it is true. It's true. We will be ready, God willing, when it gets here. Okay. I also just love, I want to read to you what Sarah Hannah Radcliffe said, says, um, she says that positive words leave a lasting positive impression in the brain. Therefore, avoid using negative words in any kinds of sentences. Okay, so we want to remember this when we're talking to our kids um, before Pesach, as we're preparing for Pesach, as we're trying to get them to help out. So she says, for instance, avoid, don't be rude, or that was rude, right? So Kids are going to probably be doing things that you feel are very rude before Pesach, like not listening to you uh, or fighting with their siblings. So um, again, so and instead of saying you're speaking in a rude way, all of which are interpreted as exact the exact same way by the child's brain as you are rude, instead you want to use the positive word in your correction. So you have you should have this on your hands out. Um, the exact opposite of the negative word. Please speak in a respectful way or please say that in a more polite way. All negative words can be replaced with their positive opposite to yield long-lasting positive emotional and behavioral results. Okay, so I really think that this is just common sense, right? Like please be polite, uh, please speak more uh, in a uh, more polite way. Please be respectful. Again, it's just a softer way of talking to our kids, gentle, more neutral, more non-confrontational, a way that really they, they can hear us, okay? And this also reminds me of, um, oh, I'm sorry, so there's still more here. Positive words bring good feelings and good results. Instead of, I don't want to argue with you, try, I'd like to work this out. Instead of, you're being wild, please calm down. Instead of, stop teasing your brother, try please play nicely or do something else right now, okay? More positive, we're just, we're really saying the same thing. We're changing a few words around in the sentence and we're packing a bigger punch. We're creating a more positive atmosphere. We're creating ways for our kids to really listen to us and also have a more positive self-image of themselves, okay? This also reminds me of these positive can-do directions 
by, um, this is in Mary Sheedy Kurchika's book, Raising Your Spirit of Child. So for example, instead of don't take forever to do your job, try this job needs to be done right now, or instead of don't get the peels of the carrots all over the place, peeling is, um, is done in newspaper, instead of don't be naughty, try saying hands to yourself, or um, instead of don't be so loud, try inside voice, instead of don't get chametz all over the place, Say, eating is done in the kitchen, okay? More positive, can-do directions, right? Tell them what they can do instead of what they can't do. Um, also, instead of you never listen to me, you could say, I know you know how to listen. Okay, so that's, again, more positive. Or instead of you never respect me, you could say, I know you know you can be respectful. Or instead of you never do what I asked you to do, I know you can pick up your toys. I know you could be helpful, okay? This is, you're um, really trying to give your child a better picture of themselves, that they can do it and that you know that they can do it. You know that they can help you out and that they can be good people. Okay, so those are all my tips for gaining cooperation from our kids and um, really also remembering how we started with all our lists for Pesach and really trying to be very soft with yourself, trying to figure out how you work best and really to just take my list as suggestions. Okay. And remember that it is Pesach cleaning is not spring cleaning. So I just want to make sure that I point that out again. All right. Well, I hope that everybody has a Chag Kasher V'Sameach and enjoys their Yom Tov.